Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, want to welcome all you, the viewers, on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is the Arua Organic Agriculture Center, where we have a two and a half acre plot of land where we are producing over 20 to 30 different species of crops. And uh, why are we producing all this on a very small plot of land? We have a challenge of land in West Nile. Not only this has led to food insecurity in the region, and as per that, we have taken this initiative to train our farmers on how they can produce all these different species on such a plot of land. And right here, just to give you a sample of what we have, we have the mulberry, we have the grabs, we have uh, our hapo corner, and right next to me here we have cabbages, whereby if I'm to randomly pick out one plant here, you can clearly see this. This is almost making uh, a kg, and uh, if you took this to the market, it would earn you some little money, around 3,000 to 4,000 shillings, which you can use in your family for buying essential basic needs that you need out there, that you can basically get from the garden. And uh, besides all this, as a trainer of farmers out there, our main important issue is what we call good agricultural practices. Clearly you can see the small gardens we have are totally mulched. Why do we mulch them? Mulching is the miracle. Mulching is the next big thing to do in all our gardens. The importance of mulching, all this we shall be sharing with you in the subsequent videos we shall be uploading on this lovely YouTube channel of ours we have here. As we proceed on still this small acre of land where we usually give the training to over 1,000 to 3,000 farmers every single year, we have what we call the Harbour Corner or the Mze Corner where I want to usher in. We have 20 different species of that is herbs and spices from rosemary to cactus we have aloe vera we have automesia we have mint we have the basil we have the oregano all these are very essential for the body and they have what we call additional health benefits for your body and since we have a small plot of land and we want to maximally utilize it you realize that every single plot we have has something on it. On the fence, we have our mukuna. It's a leguminous cover crop that we use for enhancing and adding more nitrogen in the soil. On the seal, the same edge of the fence, we have a line of papayas, which is going to give us a fruit which we can consume fresh or we can dry and make marmalade out of it. And as we continue, like I've told you, utilization is the key factor. Land is not our best thing we have as per now. When you look right here, we have an edge that used to be for running water. But since we want to utilize every single part we have here, we decided to plant lemongrass along the edge of the running fence. Why? Lemongrass is very essential. It's used in tea. It also has antioxidants. Some people say it helps in calming you down. So besides that, at the extreme end, you realize we have our sugar canes all in the edge or in the trench where our running water usually goes. Why? Because we want to utilize all the available resources of land that we have. And besides that, here we have our tomatoes newly transplanted. We have our kale sukuma wiki. We have our papers, which at the end of the day, we add value to them. Dry them, pound, pack hygienically, and sell out there. All oh, that's what we call value addition. But leaving value addition for now, as we proceed, we realize, uh, like I've told you, we have different species and 20 different species of herbs and uh, that is spices. We make sure that we use the available good agriculture practices. When you mulch, your plants need water. West Nile basically has two seasons. We have the dry and the wet. The wet always leaves us at around November, but from November, December, January, it's total dry spell without rain. But what do we do? The mulching we do always conserves water. And in addition to that, we have taken initiative to train farmers on how we can have water wells, shallow water wells dug in the villages, in the regions. Why? This water well will help you produce more water during the dry season. And this will enhance and help you produce year in, year out, whether wet season or dry season. And what you produce is very essential. Good yields, good products. You can clearly see from the base, very good base. But besides that, as we all very know, no, agriculture has different parts. We have the apiary, that is the bee rearing or the beekeeping. Right in the extreme corner there, we have the beehives, where we also train farmers on apiary. Also, we have that is animal keeping. Animals need grass, animals need pasture. Essentially, West Nile farmers, all we know, when the dry season comes, we tie our animals next to the road, looking for the green small pasture we have. But that's not the way out you can plant pasture or green pasture for your animals. 
at the extreme end there too, we have a line of elephant grass. Elephant grass grows year in, year out, whether it's dry season or the wet season. This can be basically used for your animals. Not only that, but still, we have our maize. These maize leaves are very, very important. And they can also act as hay in the dry season. All you have to do is harvest them. After harvesting all your maize leaves, keep them, store them. You can keep them on the plant itself. And this will be the food for your animals. Why? Because we want healthy animals whereby after you consuming them, or if you took them to the market out there, you realize you're getting the importance of agriculture. Agriculture is very essential. It's the next big thing in the blessed region of Africa whereby we can produce organically. When I talk about organically, on these two and a half acres of land, we don't use fertilizers. What do we use? We use compost. We use organic manure. Right over under the tree there, we have a collection point of all the green material we get from here, all the dry material, all the excess harvested where we control and organize it. We make it compose or decompose. After it's totally decomposed, after a period of two to three months is when it has fully turned into soil. And what do we do? We bring it back to the soil so that we can improve on the soil fertility. West Nile again has a challenge of the soil. The soils have been poorly used and that has led to the depletion or the depletion whereby they no longer can't enhance plant growth. But what do we do? We never give up on our soils. Like I'd already given an example, we have what we call the green uh, leguminous plants or plant cover that usually we plant in such soils and they add nitrogen into the soil, hence improving on the fertility. Not only the mulch cover we have, after a period of time, decomposes. And what I have to decomposing, it turns into the humus and the nutrients are got from that. Clearly, I can give you an example of what we produce here and the mulching. Right here, I have healthy green papers. Look at all this. Very healthy foods. All this is produced organically without any, any fertilizers. And still in West Nile, as a challenge of environmental degradation, where I've seen a lot of cutting of trees, look right over to our neighbors on the hill. Now all we think about is going to the hills looking for the virgin lands where we have fertile soils and worsening them. Look at the trench, all the strip, all the small stream that's down there. People have now gone deep into the streams. Why? They are in the search of what we call the fertile soils. But worsening all that, when they enter the streams, they dig right up to the water catchment area. Why? At the end of the day you realize we have messed up our streams. When the dry season comes, we no longer have water. But we have the solution. The water walls are giving us all that we need. But anyway, besides that, like I've told you, we always preserve. And after all that preserving and all the products we've gotten here, we always go to a point where we hold value addition. When you talk about value addition, we've talked about the maize corn. Popcorns can be got out of the maize corn and this can be popped out and sold in the markets as popcorn. Besides that, look at the beautiful mangoes we have right there. When I was coming here in the chocolate today, I bought almost four small beautiful mangoes at a cost of 5,000 shillings. Very expensive. But this is the season of mangoes where we have mangoes everywhere. What if we were adding value to the mangoes we have? It reaches a point where we have a lot of mangoes and there's nothing we can do with them. We have no factory here, but we don't have to wait for the factories. You can dry your mangoes. I'll give you a very best example, a very good example. Uh, besides that, before I show you what we have made out of the mangoes, we have our green chilies over there. The green chilies are red, and after that, when they are dried, we dry them, crush them, pack them, and after packing them, sell them to the people out there, put them in the supermarket. And this is what I'm talking about. This is a product of the green chilies we have right down there. After this is pounded and brought out to the people, you realize that you can sell this and have some money out of the agriculture you make. I talked about the mangoes. Right here, I have a series of them. Here, I have dried papaya. Dried papaya, you can slice it dried. This is value addition. I have guava. Did you know that guava can be dried and eaten the way it is? We also have this, and we have mangoes right here. I talked about mangoes, and besides that, I also have fire too. All this value addition is needed. We don't have to wait for the factories, we don't have to wait. This can be cheaply done using the easiest ways, using the cheapest, way. you don't need all the machines and all that. And right over there, over the sugar cans, or if you look at our shed there, we are drying Moringa. What is Moringa? Moringa is also part of the Arua organic agriculture center. We also plant moringa and in addition just because we want to add value to it, 
it's pounded. When you go to the shops out there, to the supermarkets out there, 100 grams of moringa is sold at 18,000 shillings. And how is it produced? Very simple, very cheap. No technology, no big machines. And all you have to do is harvest your moringa and dry it softly, hygienically, pound it, pack it, make a living out of it. All these we shall be sharing them right here and we shall be giving you more and more and more and more every other single day about that the agriculture that is an organic rural center. I want to thank every single person who has watched. Please share, please like, please subscribe so that we can get to know more about agriculture, so that we can get to know more about environmental conservation and lastly so that, that we can change the lives of our Western people as far as agriculture is concerned. Thank you very much.